Okay, so the first objective is to um, talk about the develop or talk about developing our strategic action plans. And, you know, there's, as I was developing this course and thinking about, um, you know, for each course, what we're going to do and kind of what the end goal is, um, each course is going to have a strategic action plan. You know, this is our personal strategic action plan because we're really focused on our personal values and our personal goals. Um, but there's nothing really magical about ha about it. Um, you know, PSAP is just an acronym. I just like to, you know, put letters to words so I don't have to say so many things or there's <laughs> not so many words on the, on the page. Um, but the most important thing is that you have a plan. So it doesn't have to look a certain way. Um, you know, there's not necess there's not really a template. There's just some guidelines. These are the things that need to be included in a plan in the plan um, that will help you clarify what it is that you're doing, why it is that you're doing it, what it, what is the problem that you're trying to solve, what are the barriers that you're trying to address. Um, <clears throat> because you know, without a plan, it's hard to stick to a plan because you don't have one. Um, so you know, as humans, we have a tendency to respond towards the fast and easy. So we're going to get rid of that pain. We're going to get, get the thing that we want as quickly as we can. And, you know, we're more generally focused on the immediate short-term consequences as opposed to the long-term um, impact of our behaviors or long-term goals. As we all know, this can create challenges because our automatic or you know more fluent responses are not always in our best interest and are do not always lead us and or uh, create the conditions in which we can stay grounded and and on our path um, in our life and stay focused on what our purpose is. So this is where a plan in written form in it helps us create a more concrete vision of who we are, who we want to be, and how, you know, where we want to go and how we're going to get there. So there are um, a couple, a couple components to the, um, the PSAP that will need to be included in your, um, in your plan. And the first is an evaluation of your current state. So throughout the, you know, um, thinking back to the lessons that we did in the past, we did our own, we did some assessments on ourselves and we identified kind of what our challenges were and what our barriers were and, you know, where we were discrepant from, you know, our idealized self versus our um, actual state of being. And so this section of the PSAP will be an opportunity for you to reflect upon those things um, in for yourself so you can really get down to what your core challenges are and what this plan is going to focus on because if we if we try to focus on too many things just like in treatment if we have too many goals or we're working on too many hard things at once we're not going to likely be successful because we're too far spread thin so we need to really hone in on what are those key areas that need to be addressed um, and those key barriers that are most significantly impacting our lives. Um, then there will be a section where you're um, really clarifying what your vision is for your life, what your mission, your personal mission is as a, you know, as a human, who you want to be. Um, and then your values that are your guideposts that um, lead us back to kind of keep us on the path and keep us focused on that bigger um, goal that we're heading towards. You'll then um, develop your, or, you know, uh, further refine or develop your goals and priorities um, and then create action plans re related to those goals. So these are the specific things that I am going to do um, 
and the specific actions I'm going to take on a daily basis, daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly basis um, in relation to these goals. Um, and then a plan for how you're going to commit to that action. So what is it actually going to look like? So this is, this is where we get down to the, you know, the heart and soul of what it is that we want to do, because it is one thing to say, you know, I want to, um, you know, I want to increase my scope of competence and be able to provide services to a different client population. It's one thing to say that, and it's another thing to actually have a plan with timelines and, um, and clear steps laid out that you can stick to and commit to and hold yourself accountable to, as well as um, recruiting others to help you um, remain accountable to that plan as well. And then um, there's mo the most important part in my mind and hopefully in your minds is a monitoring system of some sort to help you uh, monitor, monitor, monitor your progress towards the end goal, right? So that ultimate goal in your life, um, how are you going to, how are you going to measure that? How are you going to monitor that? And so, um, I'm actually going to be, I have a plan to send you all a little gift. Um, I was gifted some, uh, yearly by year standard acceleration charts that are that have like a hundred years on them and so i wanted to kind of for myself i was using i was using those charts to or am using those charts to look at some data within our you know more global society and to track you know to track progress over time um but what i as when i got them and i started thinking about the courses and what we're doing here and how they might be able to help you all as individuals and even myself. I thought it might be cool to start using that, you know, using that yearly by year standard acceleration chart to um, think more globally and big picture about your goals and objectives. Um, so I will, um, I will be putting those in the mail. Um, soon so you all can um, have that and hopefully I'm a you know a big proponent of standard acceleration charting and precision teaching precision learning and I hope that you all um, will find some benefit and find some value in that as well and maybe start get you thinking about different ways that you can track your progress over time. Because sometimes we get so narrowly focused, we're just, you know, looking at our daily behavior, our weekly behavior, our monthly behavior, um, but, you know, forget to look at the big picture. And so this chart is not a common one that is used, but it can help us kind of put our own goals in perspective in the big picture. Where, we, where do we want to be when we're 100 years old? Well, you can chart it and you can put a name star there and um, track your progress towards the goal. Um, Okay, so for this objective, there are a couple exercises that you're going to do that will help you prepare for developing your PSAP. The first one is to think about and brainstorm small habit changes that you can make now or in the near future that will, um, that will be things that will get you a couple steps closer toward meeting your goals. And so when we're thinking about action plans um, and we're thinking about goals, sometimes, many times, we get really ahead of ourselves and you know we set these big lofty goals and you know these complex action plans. Um, and many times those things get just dropped in a waste basket or put on a shelf because it's not it's not something that we can do right here right now in the moment. Um, but the only way to make progress is one step at a time. 
And so by focusing in on, with your action plans, the small steps that you can take right now, um, it can help us build our behavioral momentum, right? So if you're, I'm just gonna take one step, and then I'm gonna take another step, and I'm going to commit to doing these things, I'm going to embed them into my regular routines, we can't just, you know, we can't expect ourselves to change everything overnight. That is not the way that our brains and our bodies works. That's not the way the world works. We have to be systematic, gradual, shaping ourselves every day, one step at a time towards that end goal. Um, so for myself, my... I have a goal for myself related to advocating for myself and others, um, advocating in a way that's caring and compassionate, advocating in a timely manner, not, um, uh, not just letting things go. Cause that's been one of my, you know, one of my behavior patterns that has caused me a lot of internal discomfort. Um, because, you know, I see something, but I won't say something. And then, you know, I have this internal struggle, like, okay, well now I'm, am I, am I actually reinforcing that behavior because I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not addressing it. Um, so, you know, now I'm part of the problem. And so this is, this is why this goal is so important to me because I, I feel as though my pat my past pattern of patterns of behavior have been such that I've let things go. I've let, I've, um, led people to believe that things are just okay um, because I haven't, haven't said anything. I haven't taken action or done anything. So a couple things that I thought about that I could do, and that would be um, small things that I could do that would be easy to incorporate into my daily schedule because I already have, you know, times throughout my day where I can do these things or they're just quick and easy things that I can do. It's going to take, you know, 30 seconds um, or, you know, less than a minute to complete. I've got plenty of minutes in the day. I can do that. Um, so the first thing that I thought about was at the end of the day, when I um, am kind of going through my planner, is to take time to reflect back upon the day and um, identify any situations in which I should have advocated or possibly could could be improved through advocacy and um you know just writing those down just a quick daily reflection one you know two or three bullet points something simple um because what i've learned for myself is that sometimes it's better for me or my brain you know however however all of that works it's better for me to write something down um, and then sleep on it uh, because you know our brains are always working even when we don't even when we're not aware of it we're not we're not really in control our brains are just they're just you know neurons are firing and things are happening memories are being stored um, you know action patterns are being strengthened um, you know through those biological processes and so by you know taking that time to quickly reflect jot down the things that I saw that I want to think more about um, is a way to kind of focus my attention and, and intentions on those things. Um, so just noting them, not necessarily um, doing anything about them yet, just making a note of it. Um, the second thing that I thought about doing is um, uh, engaging in so before I'm going into a situation in which my ad I know already I can predict that my advocacy is going to be needed I'm going to need to say something in the moment um, uh, one strategy that I can do is to engage in a short mindfulness exercise to orient myself to the present moment get to myself into the here and now so I can be fully aware and I can pay full attention to what's happening in the moment. Um, the other thing that I thought about is in regard to my own behavior, or, you know, I've seen this, I've seen other people do this, and I do it myself as well, is like when I see something that is a problem, there's two kind of two respo common responses for me. 
either I just don't say anything at all, I ignore, I just act as if it didn't even happen, or over respond and you know I jump in and take over and you know just like almost as though like I'm dismissing kind of what the other person is doing. And so a replacement behavior that I thought of for myself was to just simply cue the person that I'd like to talk to them about something later um, and you know not in a rude or confrontational way just like hey can we um, you know, before lunch, can, you know, could I just chat with you for a second about something? Um, and then most importantly to me, uh, I don't know who else this is a problem for, but sometimes I'll say that I want to do something and then it will just, you know, it'll drop out of my working memory and I, it goes off into the ethos. And so I, you know, when I do the, do that, when I say, Hey, can I, you know, can we talk after lunch? Um, can I have a few minutes of your time? Then I need to write myself a little reminder or a note. Um, the, other, the other strategy that I want to try doing, because this is something that I've, that I've tried in the past, I've encouraged, I've taught others to do in the past as well, is to actually rehearse crucial conversations. Um, and so either doing that by myself or with some, a trusted person so I can just get comfortable with those words. So the words that are in my head, thoughts that I'm having, getting them to come out of my mouth, which might include actually writing out what it is that I want to say. And then the other thing, which is kind of related to ad my advocacy for myself and others, is to notice when others are advocating for themselves or others and reinforcing them with behavior-specific praise. So, wow, I really, you know, I saw that you were having a, a really hard time with that math problem and you raised your hand and asked for help in a calm voice and you were, I was able to come and help you and, and give you exactly what you needed. That was, that was wonderful. Thank you for advocating for yourself. Um, and by doing that, you know, I'm kind of twofold, kind of rehearsing and re setting a reminder for myself, but then also encouraging others to advocate for themselves when and if needed. Um, the second goal that I have is related to creating more meaningful contact with joy. And so this is a big area in my life. You know, I um, have a tendency and a history of just, you know, staying focused on the work that needs to be done and not doing anything fun, which leads me, you know, has led me to a lot of burnout and um, not feeling very fulfilled or um, having a lot of joy in my life. And so the, the, the things that I want to focus on within this goal are to play the piano and sing more and um, attend community events and stay connected with friends. And so the, the little things that I thought about um, that I could do are to carry my piano music with me. So I have a binder with all of my music in it and I find myself in places randomly, not just randomly, but throughout my day or throughout my week or the month, I'll find myself at a place with a piano and it's kind of fun, you know, it's fun to play on different instruments and um, cause every, every instrument sounds a little bit different and it feels different and it um, actually helps me uh, generalize those skills. So rather than just practicing on one instrument over and over and over, being able to practice on multiple instruments is really helpful in my own personal development. So if I carry my music with me, during those times when I find myself in a room with a piano, um, I, you know, could pull that out and, and practice and play when I, if I have a few minutes and if it's, you know, socially appropriate. Um, so that, that's one small habit change that I thought about for myself. Um, another one was to create and listen to a playlist of the songs that I want to, or that I'm learning. And this is really helpful because by you know listening to the songs repeatedly and by um you know engaging in some present moment exercises when i'm listening to you know tune into the different instrumentals the different vocals i can you know practice singing them um and you know practice harmonizing with the with the artist who is you know is singing the song um, that 
will be helpful in developing my own personal musicality. Um, I also uh, want to get better about um, actually putting on my schedule. There are two weekly community activities that happen all the time um, that I frequently miss because you know it's you know Thursday is soup night and um, that's just a you know community gathering. It's potluck. Everybody gets together and we talk and we sing and we play games and you know it's really fun. Um, but I frequently find myself, you know, Thursday night at eight o'clock going like, dang it, I missed soup night again. Um, it wasn't on my schedule. So, um, small habit change, put them on my schedule, make, you know, on repeat. Um, so I don't forget and I can, you know, uh, make a, make a plan to actually get there. Um, the other small habit change I find myself, which is common in this day and age, when I have a few minutes just to kill, um, that I, you know, I find myself on either on my email or on social media, just like scrolling, not even really paying attention. I'm not really attending to anything. I'm just like, you know, it's just visual stimuli. Um, and so I, I thought of my, you know, a habit that I can, um, uh, replace that random mindlessness with um, is to actually just call a friend. So rather than scrolling through Facebook, I could scroll through my contacts and the first person that I see that I'm like, oh, I should give that person a call. Just push call. And even if it's just a quick call and leave a message um, or, you know, send a text message that, um, you know, that can be something that's meaningful to me and potentially something that's meaningful to the other person. Um, and the other thing is, you know, there are times in my life or times during my day where I come across something, I see something that reminds me of somebody. Um, and so another just quick and easy behavior to remain connected and work on establishing and maintaining these friendships, these relationships that I value, but don't put a lot of effort into um, is to, you know, if I see something cool, uh, to take a picture of it and send it to somebody, you know, send it to the person and with just a quick, nice message, um, letting them know that I'm thinking about them because I think about people often and then I just don't act on it. Don't do anything about it. Um, which I, I fear, uh, creates the condition that, um, people in my life don't really think that I value them, which is sad to me because I do value the people in my life very greatly. Um, I just many times get wrapped up in my own self and my own life and forget how important that is. Um, the last goal that I have for myself is to set more realistic boundaries. Um, and so uh, this is a, another common problem I know in this world um, and among um, high functioning people um, is that many times, you know, we just take take on things, take on things, take on things until we get to a point where we're just overwhelmed and we're not meeting deadlines and our work quality goes down. Um, and so, you know, for my, uh, for myself, the actions that I can take related to this are to um, create a clear and balanced schedule. So actually just a, a template, you know, this is what my, these are my regular obligations. This is what my week is going to look like. This is kind of my ideal schedule. There's, you know, there has to be room for um, adjustment. Um, but without that like overarching plan, it's really difficult to then know where I could plug things in um, that just come up. Um, uh, the other thing that I, that I really want to start doing is, you know, on Sundays, Sundays are just, you know, they're my kind of relax, rejuvenate, get chores done day. Um, and so I want to carve out some time during my Sunday to plan out the week ahead. So take my kind of my regularly scheduled um, schedule and make sure that's in my planner and then my other, my other to do's and make sure that those are um, actually put into the schedule. The other small habit change is to carry my planner everywhere. This is, this is one that I am getting much more, much better at and um, referencing it when I'm asked to do things. 
Um, the other thing is to calendar all my obligations. So rather than just, you know, leaving them on an endless list of to-dos where they're likely to get dropped off and not completed, um, uh, I want to get into the habit of, you know, if I have my schedule and it's already mapped out, um, as things come up, I can actually put them on my schedule, a specific time, time frame. you know, I'm going to spend one hour or 30 minutes on X um, and uh, make sure it's actually on the calendar. And then the last one is to just say no. This is, you know, this is a habit that is hard to engage in um, because I like to say yes. I like to I like to be a helper. I like to, I like for people to be able to count on me. Um, but it's also not realistic to be able to take on everything. And, um, you know, so if it's not in alignment with my values or what I have going on with my life and my current obligations and expectations, I will just say no. And I actually did this last, this past week and it felt amazing. Um, and, uh, so I am, continuing to try to grow this and develop this skill over time. And it, and I was reinforced for it. Um, so that was nice, a nice feeling. Okay. So the, the second exercise within this objective is to kind of in preparation for developing the piece app is to think more globally about your goals and your values and what your life will look like if you are in you know 10 years in five years and in two years at if you're living these goals and so what we are you know the point that we are making with this and the importance of thinking more globally is that your action plan needs to be in context of where you're going. So not just, you know, in the next year, what I want to do and what I want to accomplish, but in the next 10 years, because that's a good, you know, that's a good chunk of time, you know, one decade um, worth of time in order to, um, you know, make some significant changes in your life. And I, um, I've heard frequently, and I, don't know if there's any data to support this, but that, you know, it takes ten, about 10 years to, for a change to happen and to um, fully, you know, for something to fully be implemented. Um, and I don't know if that's true. It feels true. Um, but we'll, we'll just use that as our guide um, because, uh, because it's, it's helpful to put things in context. So for me, kind of in relation to my goals and my values, I, you know, I'm saying that in 10 years, I am going to be super confident standing up and speaking up. I'm going to have no problem saying what needs to be said when it needs to be said. Um, I'm going to be playing the piano and singing at communi community functions um, and maybe even, um, you know, recording and sharing things uh, more widely. Um, and then I'm going to also be fulfilling all my obligations within a set within a set time frame and just like crushing my goals all the time. So that's my ideal self in 10 years. Um, in five years, uh, I want to be at a place where I'm um, supporting others on their path to recovery. So this is this is me advocating for others and supporting others on their path and helping helping guide them to a place of, you know, um, through their recovery journey from substance abuse um, and domestic abuse. I will be also regularly attending community functions and regularly planning my schedule a week in advance. Hopefully this happens before two years, five years, but um, that's my overarching goal. Um, in two years, uh, I am going to be continuing to engage in further self-study and identifying skills that I need to develop for, develop myself um, and, you know, learning those skills and then sharing those skills and teaching others those skills through these courses. Um, I'm going to be regularly reaching out to friends and spending time with them on a more regular basis, and I'm going to be tackling my to-do list more effectively and efficiently um, through my, um, uh, through my more organized scheduling and planning and task management and not taking on more than I can handle. Okay. So um, 
so hopefully as you complete these exercises this week, they, it will help you formulate some of those, you know, draft those ideas and draft your strategic action plan for how you want to, um, uh, for, you know, that's going to guide your life over the next uh, 10 years or so.